Um, we'll go to, to Tesla for our, our next, um, next clip. Um, so this is a very, very, very interesting development that we've talked about on the show before, but there's been a, a recent update. Um, this is Optimus, uh, also known as the Tesla bot, which is Elon Musk's general purpose robot and is expected to launch in the next few years. And with this new update, it can now identify and separate different colors. You can see it on the screen now. For those uh, listening on audio, now would be a great time to turn on the video. And this is not some CGI. This is an actual humanoid robot separating colors into different boxes based on what it's seeing with its, I want to say eyes, but video cameras, I guess would be the more technical term, right? Um, and also it can now do yoga, which is, which is kind of cool, <laughs> um, which is definitely not needed, but it's like the Boston Dynamics thing with the, the dogs dancing and, and all of that stuff. It's great from a marketing perspective, right? Um, what, what are your, I know we're deviating from, from Zoom to, to Optimus, right? But what, what are your takes when, when you see this? We'll start with yourself, Matt. We haven't um, got, gone to you to begin with yet. What, what's your opinion when you see what Elon's doing here? Well, I think, I mean, in a way, I think it's great that you have uh, competition and you have like, all these different companies working yeah. towards this because I think it's um, definitely, there's like a lot of use cases that are clear, that are useful, that are... Um, going to help humanity in a way, like, I don't know, like going into dangerous places and dealing with these things instead of sending people, yeah. sending a robot that can basically do things probably at some point very soon in a better way and yes. with more precision, etc. So that makes complete sense. Um, yeah, I mean, then there's all this transition that you have in which, like, if, if that happens and, and they start basically and, and this thing can replace humans in, in many different things, like the usual discussion on on okay, how we're going to deal with, with, with people or unemployment or, or these things, like more like a social issue in terms of uh, um, how to deal with that. But I mean, I guess, I mean, it makes sense to replace all this kind of uh, manual work and stuff into with, with something more interesting or, or yeah. things that, that people can focus on. It's just like, it's a little bit painful in the short term. Yeah. I think there was this thing that they were discussing at some point, the carriage drivers when the car appeared and there were people were saying about well, now what's going to happen with the carrier with the carriage drivers like uh, I don't know how they're called um, and then well okay they disappeared <laughs> that's yeah. not such thing but I don't think it was like such a big loss for sure. humanity I, I don't know that's yeah. my, my, my no I, I get what you're saying like jobs will always get replaced hmm. and that's just the nature of innovation and technology right we went from horses and carts to cars to now you know self-driving vehicles driving us around so it'll be an interesting transition with this with low skilled you know manual tasks which could be automated really i think i'm a skeptic in terms of the practical applicability yeah at the moment <clears throat> To me, it's a bit like self-driving cars or last mile drone delivery. Works perfectly well in a controlled environment. Looks pretty cool and it gets people excited. But the real world is a noisy, chaotic, kind of disorganized place. And so seeing those technologies out there uh, in the real world, to me, that's the real acid test. And I fear we might be in a situation where, yes, self-driving cars are, are so close, so near, but they haven't solved the real gnarly problems of the, the actual circumstances they encounter in the real world. Yeah, yeah, I, I, like a self-driving car, if it's being used in a, like a new city, which all the blueprints have been up, uploaded to, to the vehicle, so it knows what to do, and the, almost the, the, the streets have been built for it. Amazing. It's a sort of square grid format exactly. in an American city. But, but then you go to like, um, like Italy, to some like really <laughs> old street, which has been there, for, and this the, the little bumpy and everything. That's when this kind of thing becomes a little bit harder to do. I, I can see this robot falling down some very pretty stairs at some point because it hasn't, you know... With Italian drivers as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. But w w w what's your take, Paolo, when you see this? So, first, it's like a, an amazing technology, right? It is a beauty technology. Like, yeah. when you look at it, like, just balancing a robot, this is, like, super hard. You have to, yeah. like, uh, you need to detect, you need, like, all, all the hands. Also, like, it's super hard to replicate. So, in terms of, like, robotics, hardware, I mean, there are like two things, right? There's the robotics, the hardware. I mean, like AI, we're still, I mean, this is very rudimentary. So AI like needs to progress, right? But I'm a big fan of Asimov. Uh, and Asimov. Yeah. you yeah. know, this world where like, Asimov was a, like a more uh, utopist, right? Yes. Like yeah. more than dystopist. It was like before the dystopia and cyberpunk. 
And he imagined like a like iRobot, right? Mm. Where each one of us would have its own robot, you know, like, like this, like exactly, <laughs> almost the same uh, shape and, and yeah. colors. Yeah. Uh, and everyone would have its own like robot to help them uh, like in everyday tasks, right? And I think that's, that's hopefully it is where we go, right? Because right now the technology and AI and, and robotics is very concentrated, very centralized mm. by big corporations. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully it will be like more available to everyone uh, because I, I, I think it could be a massive change like if yeah, each one of us would have a, a robot. Obviously like yeah, we talk about economics and job loss and et cetera. And yeah, we are not ready yet. The, our, our models, right now in terms of like economics, the world, how we govern, etc. It's, it's not ready for these kind of things. Yeah. But hopefully we're gonna evolve in the, in the right way, like mm. Asimov dreamt about. Sure. Uh, so the utopia where we could have access uh, to this technology and, and they just make humanity better overall. Like, I hope we get there, like we, we adjust quickly because if these can really, really work and you can get you know, a couple of them, then it's only going to take, it will take this long to build a million of them, but it will take this long to build a billion because they'll build each other and it will like, self-replicate basically. Um, one, one thing that concerns me a little bit with these is you mentioned around centralization just there, and that's a really good point because what if you've got 100 million of these out there on the streets, you know, robot policemen, security guards in offices, in retail, in all environments, and then somebody hacks them and then they've got vision. If you see a, a flesh-like human, something that's non-robotic, you know, kill it, you know, and that's, that's the instruction that's given. If it's centralized, which, which, it, which it is, I mean, hack, hacking happens, it can happen, it w will happen, hopefully not on that scale, but does that keep any of you up at night wor worrying and thinking about that, or, or is it just me? But w what do you think? Well, I think there's a whole industry in computer security, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think for a very good reason, because people cut corners who, you know, people want to get to market and what's the first thing that's traded off? Security, I would think most of the time as well. So I think there's a real sense of, um, it's a good concern to have. It's a little bit premature perhaps, but it's also uh, us discovering this new technology. It's different applications, let's say, in terms of large language models, yeah. also a kind of relevant thing there. We're not quite sure how they act, how they behave. And so <clears throat> it's interesting to invent things that we don't fully understand. And I think that's the kind of uh, angle that will probably keep us up at night because there can be all sorts of uh, unintended consequences. Obviously, Asimov's iRobot, um, yeah. the famous premise of that plot is the, the interaction between rules there as well. So yeah. I think Maybe it's a bit more intellectual, but that's the kind of thing that keeps me up at night. You, you mentioned around centralization there. So, so what do you think of when I say the hacking side? Is it something that worries you? I mean, I, look, it's, someone could hack me right now, you know, but it's a different scale if you've got something that can physically do harm to somebody. Um, what, what's your opinion on that? I think that it's, yeah, as Matt mentioned, it's all about like the layers of security, right? It's different layers. And um, I mean, Today we power our entire banks and etc. Like around, like everything is digital, right? So mm. I've got my phone, and all my life is digital, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, and we're not that concerned about like hacking, you know. Even like our governments, uh, like they have the passport and etc. And they have a very good system. Obviously, hacking is happening, right? And it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. And yeah. we need to be aware of. But if we introduce the right layers of security, maybe there are like several, you know, cut off at each stage. I don't know, like something, uh, again, like, I have no idea how to do it, right? A kill switch. But a kill switch, yeah, yes. exactly. But if we have kill switch at different stages, yeah. like, that's why it needs to be designed now. And I think that's why a lot of, like, people and proponents of governments and privacy, they are thinking about that now. Like, they say, don't wait for everything to be produced, like, as a, like it's a nice yeah. park, you know? But we need to think about these things now. So, like, let's say, how can we, for instance, uh, implement the free laws of robotics right now, right, to make sure it will never harm a human. Yeah. Um, so again, it's very philosophical, but it's something that should be very practical and, and look at uh, right now. So that's yeah. why I'm, I'm not too concerned. I think we can find a way of uh, securing, like having secure like robots yeah. and, uh, and make sure like it, nothing goes wrong. And I mean, in a sense, something will get wrong. Yes. It always goes wrong, right? And then it's a matter of accepted risk, yeah. right? At, at which point we, we think that 
uh, yeah, cars are killing people, right? So, like, should we stop cars? Maybe, maybe not. You know, so yeah. it's all about a balance and accepted risks. I it's agree. that Swiss yeah. cheese model of robustness. You know, if yeah. the holes line up, then that's the uh, the perfect storm of interacting factors. But hopefully, you build enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Less holy Swiss cheese, I suppose, that it doesn't line up in that yeah. sense. What's what's your view? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, this, um, that's this, the, what is it, the three rules of robotic, right? What's it called? Like, yes, yeah. yeah, so I, I think, yeah, we need to get there, basically, with, um, or, or to some framework that works and that is, uh, but it's difficult because, you, as you were saying, right, they, they, the companies don't care about these things, they want to get fast to market, so you need to basically, the important thing is that we are thinking about that, and I think people have been thinking about that from, I don't know, probably the 50s or the 60s. Um, in a way, so uh, yeah, I mean, you have all these moral and legal issues like this thing, for instance, this typical example of the car that you are in a car driving and then something happens and there are people there and they, they can, the self-driving car needs to decide if, if it's going to like uh, go over the people there or like or, or crash and turn left or turn right, sorry, turn left or turn right and, and crash and kill the person inside yeah. of the car. Basically, that's a decision which there's no other option but to kill someone, basically. Yeah. And then how do you make it such a decision, right? It's like, um, um, I don't know, that's a lot of super interesting problems. I think we are progressing on that line on those lines as yeah. we progress with technology, there's always this thing. But yeah, it's scary because basically technology is going super fast yes. and we are accelerating in, the term, in terms of the, the knowledge and what we know like around the last 20 years in comparison with the last 100 years or what the progress we made in the last 1,000 years is yeah. like brutal, right? So it's like we have to, yeah, accelerate that. Anyway, in terms of not being able to sleep at night, I think I, yeah, I can, I'm more worried about atomic bombs still. <laughs> it's a very, a very old, Problem, but I'm still, yeah. yeah. On, the, on the legal side, it's very interesting because, like, in in cars, self-driving cars, we sell is the owner is still legally responsible. Ah, yes. So yeah. if uh, each one of us has a robot, like, and the robot does harm or anything, like, who is responsible? Yeah.